Okay, welcome back everyone to theCUBE's coverage here at ReMars. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. It's the event where, it's part of the re-series. ReMars, reinforce, reinvent. Mars stands for machine learning, automation, robotics, and space. And a lot of conversations all about AI, machine learning. This one's about AI and business transformation. We've got uh, Stepan Pushkarov, CTO and CEO, co-founder of Provectus. Welcome to theCUBE. And yeah. Russ Lamb, e-commerce, retail, data engineering lead at PepsiCo, customer story. Gentlemen, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Great thanks. to be here, John. Yeah. Thanks for so having I, us. I love the practical customer stories because it brings everything to life. This show is about um, the future, but it's all got all the things we want, we love. Machine learning, robotics, automation. If you're in DevOps, you're in data engineering. Mm -hmm. This is the world of automation. So what's the relationship? You guys, you're a customer. Talk about the relationship between you guys. Sure, sure. Perfectus as a whole is a, a professional services firm, premier AWS partner, uh, specialized in machine learning, data, DevOps. Uh, PepsiCo is our customer, our marquee customer, uh, uh, lovely customer, <laughs> so happy to uh, jointly present at this reInvent, uh, sorry, reMars. Uh, uh, anyway, Russ. I made that mistake earlier, by the way, because reInvent's always on the tip of my tongue, and yeah. reMars <laughs> is just, I'm not used to it yet, but I'm getting there. Talk about, the, what, are you guys, what are you guys working together on? Uh, well, I mean, we, we work with uh, Pervectus in a lot of ways. Um, they, really helped us get started within our e-commerce division uh, with AWS, provided a lot of expertise uh, in that regard and, and, um, yeah, and, and, and just hands-on experience. We were talking before we came on camera, you guys just on another talk and how it's all future and kind of get back to reality, Earth. Get back know, to Earth. We're on Earth still. <laughs> we're not on Mars yet or on the moon. Um, you know, AI has kind of got a future, but it does give a tell sign to what's coming industrial change, full transformation, because cloud does the back office, you got data centers, now you got cloud going to the edge with industrial space is the ultimate poster child of edge and, and automation safety. But at the end of the day, we're still in the real world now, people got to run businesses, and I think you know, having you here is interesting, so I have to ask you, you know, as you look at the technology, you got to see AI everywhere, and, and the theme here to me that I see is, the inflection point driving all this future robotics change that everyone's been waiting for, by the way. That's so like been on in movies and in, in, in novels, is the machine learning and AI as the tipping point. This is key. And now you're here integrating AI in your company. Tell us your story. Well, I, I think that you know, every enterprise is going to need more machine learning, more you know, AI or, or data science. Um, and that's the, the, the journey that we're on right now. And we've come a long way in the past six years, mm -hmm. uh, particularly with our e-commerce division, it's a really data-rich environment. So you know, going from brick and mortar, uh, you know, delivery to restaurants, vending machines and stuff, uh, it's, it's a whole different world when you're, people are uh, ordering on Amazon every couple minutes or seconds even mm -hmm. uh, our products. Uh, and, and, but they, being able to track all that. Can you scope the problem statement and the opportunity? Because if I just kind of just Again, I'm not, you're in, you're, it's your company, you're in the weeds, you're at the data, you're everything. But it just seems to me the world's now more, more integration, more different data sources, you've got suppliers, they have their different IT backends, some are in the cloud, some are in the cloud. This is like a hard problem when you want to bring data together. I mean, Absolutely. APIs certainly help, but can you scope the problem and like what we're talking about here? Well, we've got so many, uh, different sources of data now, mm -hmm. right? So we, we used to be relying on a couple of aggregators who would pull all this data yeah. for us and hand us an aggregated view of things. But now we're able to partner with you know, different retailers and get detailed, granular information about transactions, orders, mm -hmm. and it's just changed the game, from, yeah. changed the landscape from just like getting a, a rough view to seeing the nuts and bolts and, the, and like all the, the, the moving parts. Yeah, and you see in data engineering much more tied into like cloud scale, then you got the data science, is more the democratization, application and enablement. So I got to ask, how did you guys connect? What was the problem statement? How did you guys, did you have smoke and fire? You came in, solved the problem? Was it a growth thing? How did this, how did you guys connect uh, as a customer with Productive? Yeah, I can elaborate on that. Yeah. So we were in the very beginning of that journey when there was like just a few people in <laughs> this new startup, <laughs> let's call it, start up within PepsiCo, yeah. uh, calling like, a, it's not only e-commerce, it was a huge belief from the top management yeah. that it's going to bring tremendous value to the enterprise. So there was no a single use case, hey, do this and you're going to get that. So it's a huge belief that e-commerce is the future. Uh, some industry trends like uh, from brand-centric to yeah. consumer-centric, 
So uh, brand, uh, branded product center, uh, Amazon has the uh, mission to build the most customer-centric customer uh, uh, company. And I believe this, that success, it gets uh, a lot of enterprises are being influenced by that success. Yeah. So I remember that time Pepsi, uh, PepsiCo had a huge belief. We started building just from scratch, uh, figuring out what is, uh, what is the business need, what are the business use cases. We have not started with the IT. We have not started with this very complicated migrations, modernizations. Uh, so clean like, sheet of paper. Yeah. yeah from scratch. From scratch. And you, so you got the green light. Yeah, and we the had leadership to get, through the holy water on that and said, hey, we'll do this? That's, that's exactly what happened. Uh, it was uh, from the top down, the CEO kind of set aside the e-commerce vision as kind of being able to, in a rapidly evolving business place like, like e-commerce, it's a growing field. Not everybody's figured it out yet. Uh, but to be able to change quickly, right? The business needs to change quickly, the technology needs to change quickly. And that's what we're doing here. So this is interesting, a lot of companies don't have that actually luxury. I mean, it's still more fun because the tools are available now that all the hyperscales built on their own. I mean, mm -hmm. back in the day, <laughs> 10 years ago, they had to build it all. Facebook, you know, I had people on here from Pinterest and other, other companies, they had to build all of them from scratch. Now cloud's here, so how did you guys do this? What was the playbook? Take us through the AI, because it sounds like the AI is, is core you know, belief principle of the whole entire system. What did you guys do? Take me through, yeah, the, through. Uh, the, the journey there. Yeah, beyond uh, management decisions, strategic decisions mm -hmm. that has been made, uh, have it as, as a separate startup, whatever. Okay, so some, some practical, <laughs> tactical. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's, it may sound like a cliche, but it's a hu huge. huge thing, because yeah. I work with many enterprises, and this like, center of excellence that does uh, a nice technology stuff and then looks for the budget on the uh, different business units, it just doesn't go anywhere. It could uh, take you forever uh, to modern. Uh, modern we call that the Game uh, of Thrones yeah. environment. Yes. Yeah, nothing yes. ever gets done. So it done blows up here, at the end. <laughs> here, these, these guys, and I, I have to admit, it's just, it's, uh, well, I don't want to steal their th thunder. I just uh, want to uh, emphasize it as an external uh, person. These guys just made it so differently. They yeah. even physically sat in a, in a different office in the WeWork uh, car working and built that business from scratch. That's uh, what Andy uh, Jassy talked about two years ago and if you look at some of the big successes on AWS, Capital One, mm -hmm. all the big Goldman Sachs, the leadership, real commitment, not like BS, like total commitment says go. And yeah. But enough rope to give you some room, right? Yeah, yeah I think that's, that's the thing is, yeah, they, they, there was always uh, a, an IT presence right, overseeing what we were doing within e-commerce, but we had a lot of freedoms to make design choices, technology choices, uh, and, and you know, really accelerate the business. Focus on those use cases where we could uh, make a big impact with a technology okay, change. Take me through the stages of the AI transformation. Yeah. What are some of the use cases and, and specific tactics you guys executed on? Well, I think that the supply chain, uh, which I think is a, a hot topic right now, but that was um, you know, one, one use case where we're using yeah. you know, like data, real time, pseudo real time data to inform our, our sales projections and, and uh, delivery um, logistics. Um, but also our marketing re return on investment, I feel like that was a really interesting and complex problem to solve using machine learning. Because there's so much data that we needed yeah. to process uh, in terms of countries, of territories, uh, products, like which, where, where do you spend your, your limited marketing budget when you have so many choices? And using machine learning boiled that all down to you know, this is the, the optimal choice right now. What were some of the challenges and how did you overcome them in the, in the early days to get things set up? Because it takes a lot of energy to get it going, to get the models. What were some of the challenges that had, and how did you overcome them? Well, I think some of it was expertise, right? Like ha having a partner like, uh, like Perfectus and Stefan uh, really helped because they could guide us. Stefan could guide us, give his expertise and what he knows in terms of uh, and what he's seen to, to our budding and growing business. And what were the things that you guys saw that you contributed on? And was there anything new that you had to do together? Yeah, yeah. so yeah, for, first of all, just a very practical tip. Yes, yeah, st start with the use cases. Yeah. Clearly talk to the business and say, hey, 
these are the list of the use cases that prioritize them. So uh, not not with IT, not with technology, not with the uh, migration thing. Yeah. Don't don't my, time touch anything uh, legacy mm -hmm. systems. Second, get data in. So you may have your legacy systems uh, or uh, some some other third-party systems that you, you work with, you, there's no AI without data. Get, yeah. get, get all the pipelines, get, uh, get data in, uh, bootstrap, quickly bootstrap the uh, data lake, uh, lake house, uh, uh, put the, all the pipelines, all the governance in place. And yeah, uh, literally took us three months uh, to get up and running and uh, we started delivering first First analytical reports, it's just uh, uh, to have, have so something back to business and keep going. By the way, that's huge speed. I mean, this is speed. If you go back and had that baggage of IT and the old uh, antiquated systems, you'd be dragging probably yeah. months, right? I mean, it's at a least. year, years, years. Yeah. You <laughs> imagine you can, uh, you should migrate SAP to the to the cloud first. No, you don't do. Uh, <laughs> don't, don't need to do that. Pipeline. Just, just get data. I need data. Stream that data. <laughs> All right, so where are we now? When did you guys start? I want to get it just kind of timeline in my head because I heard three months. Where are we now? You guys threw it now, you have impact, you have, you have results? Yeah, I mean that, for our marketing ROI engine, we, we've you know, built it and it's, it's developed within e-commerce, but we, we've started to spread it throughout the organization now. So it's not just about the digital and the e-commerce space. We're, we're deploying it to you know, regionally, to, other, uh, to Europe, to Latin America, uh, other divisions within uh, PepsiCo. And it's it's just grown so you exponentially. You have scale to it right now. Yeah. Well, that, so that, how that, far are you in now? What, what? How many years? Months? Days? Uh, well, e-commerce. Yeah. The, the division was was created six years ago, which is yeah. Uh, yeah, so we've had some time to, to okay. develop this uh, you know, our, our machine learning capabilities and and this use case particular. Uh, but it's it's increasingly relevant uh, as and, and expansion is happening as. What we are you speak. most proud of? You look back at the impact. What are you most proud of? Um, I think the relationship we built with the people um, you know, who, who use our technology, right? Just seeing the impact is is what makes me proud. Can you give an example without releasing any confidential information? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, there, there was there was an example um, from my talk about I, I was approached recently by our sales team. They're having difficulty with supply chain, my, and monitoring our uh, you know, our our fill rate of our top brands with, with these retailers. And they come up to me, they, they have this problem, they're like, how do we solve it? So we work together to find a data source, integrate, you know, just start getting it, that data in the hands of yeah. people who can use it within days. You know, not, not talking like you know, a long time. Uh, bring that data into our data warehouse and, and then surface the data into, in a tool they can use you know, within, within a, a matter of a week or two. I mean, the transformation is just incredible. In fact, we were talking on theCUBE earlier today around you know, data warehouses in the cloud, data meshes of different pros and cons, and the theme that came out of that conversation was data is a product now. Yes, yes, And absolutely. what you're kind of describing is, just give me the product, <laughs> or find it, right, and right. bring it in with everything else, and there's some you know, clean room stuff that people do if they have issues with that, but if not, it's just bring it in, right? It's a product. Well, especially with the, like, the data exchanges now. AWS has a data exchange. And this, is, I think, is the future of, of data and, and what's, what's possible with data. Because you don't have to start from, okay, I've got this Excel file somebody's been working with on their desktop. Uh, this is a, a you know, someone has taken that file, put it into a warehouse or a, a data model, and then they, they can share it with you. So are you happy with these guys? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. You're actually telling the story. What was the biggest impact that they did? Was it partnering, was it you know, writing code, bringing development in, counseling, all of the above, managed services? What was I, the I think the biggest impact was the idea, you know, like being able to bring ideas to the table and not just you know, ask us what we want, right? Like, I, I think Provectus is a true partner uh, and, and you know, was able to share that, that sort of expertise with us. You know, Andy Jassy, whenever I interview in the Cube, he's now in charge of all Amazon, but when he was at AWS, I used to he always had to use their learnings, get the learnings out. What was the learnings you look back now and say, hey, those were tough times, we overcome them, we stopped, we started, we iterated, we kept moving forward. What was the big learning as you look back, some of the key success points, maybe some failures that you overcome, what was the big learnings that you could share with folks out there now that are in the same situation where they're saying, hey, I'd rather start scratch and, and, mm -hmm. and do a reset. Yeah, so with that in particular, uh, you know, 
Yes, we, we, we started this, this like sort of startup within the enterprise, uh, but now we've got to integrate, right? It's been six years and, and it's e-commerce is, is now sharing our data with the rest of the organization. How do we do that, right? There's an enterprise solution and we've got this scrappy, or I mean, not scrappy anymore, <laughs> but we've got our own you know, way of doing data. You kind data of bootstrapped. Data. I mean, you were kind of given charter. It's right. a startup within the big company. I mean. But our, our data platform now is robust and yeah. it's, uh, it's one of the best I've seen. Uh, but, but how do we now get those systems to talk? And I think Provectus has came to us with, here, there's this idea called data mesh, where you can you know, have these two independent platforms, yeah. but share the data in a, in a centralized way. And a, and a, and a, yeah. So you guys are obviously have a data mesh in place, big part of the so architecture. It is, it is in progress, it is, yeah. uh, but we know the next step. <laughs> so we know the next step, we know the next two steps, what, what we're going to do, what, uh, what we need to do to make it really, to have that common metadata layer yeah. between different data products within organizations, different locations, yeah. uh, different business units, so they can start talking to each yeah. other through the data and yeah. have specific SLAs on the data. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it's smart because I think one of the things that people I think, I'd love to get your reaction to this, is that we've been telling the story for many, many years. You have horizontally scalable cloud and vertic vertically specialized domain solutions. You need machine learning that's smart, but you need a lot of data to help it. And that's not a new architecture. It's a data plane, it's a control plane. But now everyone goes, okay, let's do silos. Uh, and they forget the scale side, and then they go, wait a minute, you know, I'm not going to share it. And so you have this new debate of, I, and I want to own my own data. So the data layer becomes an interesting conversation. Yeah, yeah it's like metadata data layer. Yeah, yeah. so what, what, how do you guys see that? Because this becomes a super important kind of decision point, architecturally. I mean, my, my take is that they, they, there has to be some there will always be domains, right? Yeah. Everyone, <laughs> like there's, there's, there's only so much that you can find commonality across, uh, you know, like in industry, for example. Uh, but there will, always, there will always be a data owner. And, you know, kind, kind of like what happened with REST and APIs, yeah. how that enabled microservices uh, within applications and being sharing in a, in a standardized way. I think something like that has to happen uh, on the, in the data space. So it's not a monolithic yeah. data warehouse, it's... You know, the other thing I want to ask you guys both, if you don't mind commenting while I got you here, because you're both experts. Um, we just did a, a, a showcase um, on data programmability. Kind of a radical idea, but like data as code, we call oh, it. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, if data is a product and you're acting on, you've got an architecture and system set up, uh, you've got to write code, it's programmable. You need, you're coding with data, data becomes like a, part of the development process. What do you guys think of when you hear data as code and data being programmable? We'll start. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's <laughs> interesting. So yeah, first of all, uh, uh, I think Russ can elaborate on that. Uh, data engineering is, is also software engineering. Machine yeah, learning yeah. engineering is a software. It's at the end of the day, it's all product. So we can use different terms and yeah. buzzwords for that, but uh, that, uh, this is uh, what we have at the end of the day. So uh, having the data, uh, another bu I, I will use another, bu another bu buzzword, but in terms of the, that headless architecture, yes. when you have yeah. uh, a nice SDK, nice API, but you can manipulate with the data as your uh, programming object to build rich applications, uh, for your users and give it a, and share not as just uh, a table in uh, Redshift or a, a bunch of CSV files in S3 bucket, but share it as a programmable thing that yeah. you can uh, yeah. work with. Data uh, as code. Yeah, this is Infrastructure as code was a revolution for DevOps, but it's not AI ops, so it's something different. It's really, it's data engineering, it's programming. It's, it's yeah, this is the yeah. way to deliver data to your consumers. So, uh, there are different ways. You can show it on a dashboard, you can show it, uh, you can expose it as an API, or you can uh, give it as an object, a uh, programmable in, uh, interface. So now you're set up with a data architecture that's extensible, because that's the mm -hmm. goal. You don't want yes. to foreclose. You must think about that, it must keep you up at night. What's going to foreclose that benefit? Because there's more coming, right? A absolutely, there's always more coming. And I think that's why it's important yeah. to, to have that robust data platform yeah. to work from. And, and yeah, as, as Stefan mentioned, I, I'm, I'm a big believer in yeah. data engineering as software engineering. Yeah. It's not some 
like it's not completely separate. You have to follow the best practices, software engineers practice, yeah. and yeah. You know, really think about maintainability and scalability. You know, we were riffing about how cloud had the SRE managing all those servers, one person. You, data engineering has a many to one to many relationship too. You got a lot going on. It's not on managing a database. It's millions of data points and data opportunities. Yeah. So, gentlemen, thanks for coming on theCUBE. I really appreciate it. And thanks for telling the story of Pepsi. Um, of course. And great conversation. Yeah. Uh, congratulations on, the, on this great customer. And thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thank the you, Cube. thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Russ. Russ, would you like to uh, wrap it up with the uh, pantry shops story? Oh, area? Yeah. I, I think it will just be a, a super relevant evidence <laughs> of the <laughs> agility and speed and some real world let's outcomes. Go, let's go, yeah, yeah. Close us out. Yeah. So when, when, when the pandemic happened and there were lockdowns everywhere, people started buying things online. And we noticed this and got a challenge from our, our direct-to-consumer team saying, look, we need a storefront to be able to sell to our consumers uh, and, and we've got 30 days to do it. So <laughs> we need to work fast. And so we, we, we built uh, uh, not just a website, but all, like everything that behind it, the logistics, the supply chain aspects, uh, the data platform. And we didn't just build one, we built two. We got pantryshop.com and snacks.com. Uh, and good domains. within 30 days. <laughs> good domains. <laughs> Domain broker was happy on that one. <laughs> we'll continue the story. Yeah, uh, yeah that, so I, I feel like that, the, the agility that's required for that kind of thing and the, like, the planning to be able to scale from you know, just a, a, you know, an idea to something that people can use every day. And, and, uh, yeah. That's, I, I think, what And you know, that's a great about. point too. That shows if you're in the cloud, you're doing the, the work, you're prepared for anything. The pandemic was the true test for who was ready because it was unforeseen, force majeure. It was just like, here it comes, and the people who were in the cloud had it set up, could move quickly. The ones that couldn't, exactly. Yeah. We and know what I, happened. And I would like to echo this. So they have built not just a website, they have built the, the whole business line would then lo and launch that successfully to production. Uh, that uh, includes sales, marketing, supply chain, uh, e-commerce uh, uh, side within 30 days. And that's just a role model that could be used by uh, other enterprises. Yeah. And it was not possible without, first of all, right culture, uh, uh, and second, uh, without cloud, Amazon, uh, ag agility, elasticity, yeah and the, all the tools that we have in place. Well, the right architecture allows for scale. That's the whole, I mean, you did everything right at the architecture. That, that's scale. I mean, and you're yeah. scaling. And, and, we, and we empower yes, our engineers to, yeah. to make those choices, right? We, you know, we, we're not like super bureaucratic where we, every, every decision has to be approved by the manager or the manager's manager. The engineers have the power to just make good decisions yeah. and that's how we move fast. That's exactly the future right there. I mean, yeah. This is what it's all about. Reliability, scale, agility, mm -hmm. the ability to react and have applications roll out on top of it without long time frames. Congratulations, exactly. that's one on theCUBE, appreciate it. All Thanks, right. John. Thank you. Okay, you're watching theCUBE here at Remars 2020. I'm John Furrier. Stay tuned, we've got more coverage coming after this short break.